Hello there, World of Tankers! Welcome to the channel! I'm your host, Drudels Blitz, and in today's video, I'll be listing the fixes that I would put into World of Tanks Blitz that would solve a lot of the problems that we currently have in the game. You guys can let me know if you agree or disagree with what I have to say, and let me know in the comments. The other day, I made a video talking about why I have a hard time enjoying Blitz sometimes, and why it's getting worse as time has continued to go on. With the poor balancing decisions from Wargamings, the fact that they just refuse to add new content, and everything else, it does make the game sometimes rather unenjoyable. And the video I posted seems to resonate with a lot of people, as it's gotten over 20,000 views in three days, making it one of my most viewed videos on the channel of all time for the amount of days it's been out. And, I mean, I get your guys' complaints. I get them all the time. And I agree, for the most part, there are a lot of problems with Blitz. So in today's video, I'm going to be listing the fixes that I would implement into the game. And you guys can let me know what you think, and hopefully Wargaming listens. I doubt they will, but uh, it's always good to share ideas, right? So let's start off with a really simple one. This was the main topic that I talked about on my previous video, which was the calibrated shells changes, the gun rammer nerf, all of the changes to equipment. Personally, I think the way equipment is currently done in Blitz is really poor. Now, in a perfect world, Wargaming would just put equipment back to what it was before they tinkered with it, and I'd be happy. However, what I really want to be added into Blitz is customizable equipment, just like World of Tanks PC has and what Blitz actually used to have. Being able to choose what equipment you can put on your vehicle makes it more unique to each player and their individuality. And I think that this is something that Wargaming should try to adapt into Blitz. I think it would be really, really fun to have the ability to put a gun rammer on one of your heavies, but then maybe put V-stabs on it and improved hardening. Improved hardening, for anybody that doesn't know, gives you extra HP and track durability, which is really, really cool. But then medium tanks can get super cool abilities too. World of Tanks PC has a whole boatload of equipment. And I'm not saying that Wargaming has to copy every single piece of it into Blitz. But I do think that if they put a lot of it into Blitz, it would be a lot more fun. A great example of this would be a turbocharger. I've been wanting a turbo to be in the game for years. A turbo would allow your vehicle to maybe go an additional 5 kilometers per hour in top speed and an extra 4 in reverse. And it would make the game a lot more fun for super heavies, which are especially very limited in their capabilities right now. Let's pretend I had a mouse in Blitz, right? I could run a turbocharger, enhanced gun lane drive, or maybe something like V-stabs, and then I could also pair that with extra HP being improved assembly. But maybe I don't want to go for a faster mouse with really good hit points. Maybe I want to go for a DPM mouse. So how about I run improved ventilation, gun rammer, and then I pair that all off with a turbo so I can get the accuracy of vents, or maybe I could even run V-stabs or refined gun. You can get my point. I think that if Wargaming had customizable equipment, it would make the game a lot more fun. It would allow each player to customize a tank in their own way. And then people couldn't just say what the best loadout is. Everybody can have their own unique loadout. Somebody can go for spotting on a medium tank. Others can go for camo or DPM or accuracy. It would be very fun. I think it's one of the major things that allows World of Tanks PC to excel, at least in that area, is the level of diversification that you can have. There's many times on PC I've made videos having an entirely different loadout to other people, and it's a blast, especially when people share their opinions. So that's the first thing. I think equipment right now is old and outdated and should be changed to be a lot more fun. Now, I do think that the bond equipment idea is terrible. Same for bounty equipment. I think equipment should be the same across all accounts for players. I think that there should not be better levels of equipment if Wargaming did plan on bringing this into the game. That is the first change that I think I would really like. I think it would make the game a lot more exciting and unique to each player. Then we arrive to the second part, which is the matchmaker. I think we can all agree the matchmaker is quite terrible right now, and I think that uh, Wargaming should put in, obviously, quite a bit of effort to make it better. So what would I do to make the matchmaker better? Well, first of all, I would increase the amount of players on each team 
by one. Yes, I know a lot of people like 10v10, but honestly, the maps are just not large enough for 10 versus 10. Adding one additional player, however, would be, you know, pretty good for the, uh, the current design of the game. And adding one additional player would allow teams to be just that little bit more balanced. Now, not only do I want games to have one extra player, but I also want the matchmaker itself to do a better job at balancing tanks. There's two different types of balancing. There's tank-based matchmaking and tank-type matchmaking. What do I mean? Well, tank type matchmaking is referring to the fact that there are different types of tanks in the game. Also, let me pause the replay and play it so it doesn't bug out, but let's start off with tank-based matchmaking, right? Tank-based matchmaking is the different types of tanks in the game. Heavy, medium, tank destroyer, light. This is a great example here. My team, if we take a look at the lineup, has one medium, an AMX 30B. The enemy team has two mediums, a T62A and TVP 5051. How is it fair that my medium gets punished simply due to the matchmaker? What is my medium supposed to do against two mediums on the medium flank. The answer is nothing. You're just losing the medium flank immediately. It's stupid. Why are you driving a medium if the game's going to screw you over and not allow you to do your job on the medium flank? There should be at minimum two mediums in each game, three heavies, and like two tank destroyers. That should be the minimum loadout. And then obviously you can have a light here or there. That's fine with me. But the problem right now is what you normally see is three tank destroyers, two heavies, and like two mediums and that's what we see most of the games look at my team we have three tank destroyers and then we have uh three heavies and one medium there needs to be a reduction in the amount of tank destroyers that are allowed to be played on each team instead of three let's say if we want to keep the current seven versus seven format instead of three there needs to be two tank destroyers on each team but it's not just that the games just need to be balanced each team needs to have the same number of mediums, tank destroyers, lights, and heavies. It's just a fact. I've ha heard this dumb comment from people that say, oh, well, if, you know, an even amount of heavies, mediums, and tank destroyers fight each other every game, it's going to get boring. But, like, that argument makes no sense. Each single game you play in Blitz is entirely unique, and tanks are completely diverse from each other. So, saying that because you're fighting an even matchup makes the game less fun, I, it just doesn't even make sense. It's just uh, an irrelevant comment. The the second thing that needs to happen is tank type matchmaking. So tank based, I just went over, right? Tank type is that there are different types of vehicles in each class. So a good example of this is a badger. Is a badger comparable to a grill? No, it's not even remotely comparable to a grill 15. I'm sick and tired of one of my teammates being in a grill and the enemy team having a badger and the badger's just an additional heavy so they'll have three heavies and then a badger so they'll get four heavies which push super aggressive right at the beginning of the game steamroll the enemy team and it's over it's not comparable it really isn't there needs to be tank based matchmaking and tank type that way not only do you have even matchups but if you're driving a grill then the enemy team's tank destroyer has to be either a grill a 4005 or something that is meant to sit in the further positions in the back. If you're driving an E3, then an enemy badger, XM66F, E4, can go up against you, making it so that you're going to be fighting tanks in similar positions due to the tank that you are also using. A great example of this as well is super heavies. I can't tell you how annoying it is to drive a mouse, an E100, or a VK90, and then get put up against one E6 or a 50B. Because you're driving a heavy, meant to farm out other heavies, the matchmaker refuses to put you up against heavies, and then if it does, it puts you up against a mobile heavy with an autoloader. It is the most cringe thing ever. The matchmaker should put you up against a super heavy if you are in a super heavy. And there are plenty of super heavies in the game. There's the VK90, I count the 114 SP2 as a super heavy, I count the 116 F3 as a super heavy. We can also add in the E100, the mouse, VK72. There's a boatload of super heavies. And if the game was more balanced in this way, it would definitely make the game a lot more fun. Heck, I even count the AMX M454 as a super heavy as well. But driving a Rhino should not go up against the mouse or an E100. And that's how I see the matchmaker being balanced. So those are the changes that I would make to the matchmaker. Now, yes, I do think that it would be a lot more fun if the matchmaker was skill-based. But as of right now, I just don't think there's enough people on each individual server to have an effective skill-based matchmaker. We've seen Wargaming's terrible take on skill-based matchmaking. The only way to make skill-based matchmaking work is by only having the bad players balanced. The problem is Wargaming was trying to balance the good players when they had skill-based matchmaking in the game. So if my team had, uh, you know, me on it, 
and I would bring the win rate up because my account almost has a 70%, the Wargaming would give me really bad players to make up for that, which would give the enemy team overall a win rate advantage because they have six decent players versus me with one really good player and three really bad players, and you can get the problem there. The way the matchmaker needs to work is it simply needs to stop 40 percenters specifically like 45 and below who don't try who don't know how to play the game from getting into your games if you do know how to play the game there should be a separate matchmaker for people that are really bad and who are actually trying to get better don't get me wrong i have no problems with people if they want to chill and have fun and blitz but at the same time i don't want those people that aren't playing the game to the utmost of capabilities on my team because it's not that big of a problem when it happens once but when you have an enemy team that has two zeros and my team which has almost two zeros like come on it's not fun when you have people dealing zero and you have to whip out six thousand damage paired with a two mate that does 3k nine thousand combined to rip a win out the teeth of your gameplay it's just it can be very very annoying so you can understand some of the comments that I'm making here when it comes to the balance of the game. There are obviously many ways to balance the game, and everybody obviously has their own opinions on what they would do. But these are the changes that I would make to the matchmaker, to equipment, and the overall balance department in that area. Now we arrive to the balancing of the game itself. First of all, autoloaders need a flat nerf. Every single one. The fact that autoloaders are sitting at more damage per minute than single shot tanks makes absolutely no sense. The VZ-55 and Kron are both sitting at 2700 damage per minute. The AMX-50B is at 3000, the T-57 Heavy is at 2700. Why are autoloading vehicles having more DPM than single shots? It doesn't make sense. The whole point of an autoloader is to sacrifice damage per minute to deal a large amount of damage in a short amount of time. But what's the point of driving a single shot when you can just drive a double shot? A great example of this is the Rhino and Double Shot Yo, both featuring over 2,500 to 600 DPM, right? I can drive, how about an E100? And in my E100, I can deal 660 damage and then have 2,200 DPM. Or I can drive, I don't know, a Rhino. Shoot two shells into the E100 for 840 versus the 660 the E100 deals, and then fire another shell because I'm an auto reloader, so deal another 420, and now that's 1300 hit points taken off the E100, back into cover, and by the time the E100 tries pushing me, I still have flat more DPM. And that's the problem. Right now, autoloaders have really good DPM, and they really destroy the balance of the game. You see 4005s that are able to get away with just the dumbest YOLOs, TVPs, and the boss shots here on 25 ton. I, I was talking with my friend yesterday, or the other day, and uh, he was in the 268. And I said, you know, we're up against a bat chat. Can you actually come up with an advantage the 268 has over the bat chat? You know, at face value, you might say, oh, well, it's got more alpha, but it really doesn't. I mean, if you're running the three shot on the bat chat, you are able to deal 700 damage, which is two shots in about, what, 1.9 seconds? That's it. 1.9 seconds, you can deal 350 twice. And not only that, the bat chat has more view range than the 268. It has incredibly troll armor. It has a decent amount of hit points, the same as the 268. It has better accuracy on the move, flexibility. It's basically got every advantage over it. And it's just autoloaders in general. I mean, autoloaders just get this huge amount of damage output and they don't suffer in any other category right now. That needs to change. Autoloaders need to be punished for dumping their clips, at least if you have the opportunity to. Autoloaders should be played smart. They shouldn't be played recklessly. But that's the problem we currently are living in with Blitz is that people are getting away with driving these autoloaders incredibly recklessly and getting away with it. Like a great example, the Amex 50B has 3000 DPM, some of the highest APCR premium penetration, a 1500 damage clip, and reactive? What are we smoking, Wargaming? Why did we decide to give the 50B reactive? It makes no sense. If the 50B is going to have its current capabilities, then it should be sitting at 2400 DPM max, at least in my eyes. Remove reactive and maybe remove, I don't know, still three, 400 DPM and it'll be fair. But right now, the fact that the 50B can just do whatever it wants and get away with it is really stupid. I think everybody can agree wholeheartedly that autoloaders are a massive problem with the game and one of the major reasons why turbo battles exists so darn hard. Because it just, you know, if it's say a full health heavy, for example, right? I'm in an IS-8, that's 2,340 health. One 4005 can take me down to less than 800. 
1 to 57 heavy can bring me down half of my health. And that's the problem. It's just you see these vehicles that are able to absolutely obliterate you immediately. I was playing the Kron yesterday and it was just brain dead mode. Like I was thinking to myself, why drive any other tank when I can just drive a Kron? Uh, what's the point? Why drive any other vehicle? Drive, why drive the 116 F3, which I've been having fun in, when I can just drive a Kron and drive faster on overall speed due to the speed boost, reverse faster, technically have more alpha due to the fact it's got a 2.4 second intra clip with 410 damage per shot, have a turret that's nearly impervious to even tank destroyers. I don't know. It's really stupid. I think autoloaders are really in a dumb state right now, and Wargaming needs to start nerfing them. And then we arrive to the final change that I would put into the game, which is the fact that, well, uh, DPM is just too high in general. The fact that the average damage per minute of heavies in tier 10 is now 26 to 2700 is ridiculous, especially when you realize that's not even with rammer. That's with calibrated shells. It's stupid that heavies have that much DPM. Then you get to the mediums and Wargaming's buffing vehicles like the E50 M&M48 Patton, which should not be getting buffs. And vehicles like tank destroyers are getting more and more alpha, more and more damage per minute. It's really, really poor decision making. If you want to have a good way to balance the game, Wargaming needs to simply nerf all damage per minute across the board from tier 5 to tier 10 by 15%. Doing this would give the ability for all tanks to live longer. And living longer would mean that games are more fun. It would mean that you have a bigger chance of making an impact in the game. It would allow heavies to get into position faster and get some more damage before the medium flank gets absolutely combusted. Lowering 15% of every tank's DPM is an equal nerf. So an E100 is going to go from maybe 2200 DPM to like 1800. And then an STB will go from 3000 DPM to like 2700. Each tank's going to lose the same amount of damage respective to how much DPM they had before. So realistically, it means that the, the results themselves shouldn't change much. But what it would do is it would allow vehicles that normally struggle to be able to get into the game, first of all, or vehicles that struggle in general to just do what they need to can now have a little bit more time as the games should technically last 15% longer. So those are the changes that I would make. In general, these are the changes that I would make to World of Tanks Blitz. Wargaming has done some good. They removed the crew skills uh, training, which was one of the best decisions they've made in a while. Uh, removing that from the game basically made it so that uh, people don't have to grind crew, which was one of the most irritating things in the game. You still have to do that in World of Tanks PC, and it's a pain. So I'm really glad that Wargaming actually removed the crew skill grinding aspect because it definitely makes the game a lot more fun. Uh, in, in that regard, but uh, in the rest of the regards, it's still pretty dang poor, and there's a lot of problems I have with Blitz. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Let me know if you agree. Let me know if you disagree with my decisions, but uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye!